Okay, so uh, my name is Gabor Samo, so, uh, first of all, and I'm going to talk about uh, working with upstream distributing uh, pole modules for, from uh, CPAN. Um, uh, a little background, I've been programming for about 20 years, and uh, I've been involved in the Perl committee for about 10 years. And I wonder, uh, among the people here, who is using Perl? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so almost everyone. And anyone is involved in the packaging Perl for, for uh, distributions, for distributions? Okay. So, let's see a, uh, an issue, a couple of issues, and I would like to talk about these. Um, anyone knows what Smolder is? Okay, so it's a web application collecting uh, test data from Perl. But it doesn't really matter, because in fact it's also a module on CPAN. So if I want to install it, um, then it's, I just go and um, try to install it from uh, my package management system, right? So for example, I'm using Ubuntu, so therefore, I'm just first I'm trying to search if Smolder is there in the package management system, I'm using 9.10, and it's not found, it's not there. So I have another case where I, have, I see some problem uh, some employee in a company needs to install a Perl script I just gave to him. And that Perl script uses various modules from CPAN. So what does the user need to do? He needs to first install those modules. So the recommendation from the distributions, from the Fedora people, the Ubuntu distributions, is to use their own tools to in install these modules. So they go and they say, aptitude search, try Tini, which is a module on CPAN. Great, not found. So we have another problem here. And um, just a third case, which is actually the same, that uh, I go and try to write some application and search on CPAN for some module, uh, for solution, and then once I, try, I found the module I want to use, I go to Ubuntu, trying to install it, up to search, I can't find it. Um, up Probably you've um, encountered similar situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how big is this problem? Who has never encountered such problem? So every module he wanted to install was always... Okay, I take it that I'm one person slightly. Okay? So how big is this problem? You might ask. And uh, that's a big problem. Uh, this is the statistics I just found. CPAN has about 20,000 packages now. Maybe not today, maybe only tomorrow, but it's getting there. We are about 19,000, some 500, I think. Ubuntu 9.10, the latest one, has about 1,900. So it's about 10%. And Ubuntu 8.4, which is the long-term support, which many people use on... Uh, web servers probably, or other places, has now 6%. Probably when it came out, it was also 10%, just CPAN is growing so fast that now it's, it, it went down to 6%. So we see that lots of modules are missing. Obviously, we don't need all of the modules. I mean, many people know that there are a couple of modules on CPAN, I think three or four, that are not that useful. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe five, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but actually, we need a lot more than what we have on, in Ubuntu. And uh, I took Ubuntu as, as, an, uh, as an example. Basically, it also means that Debian has more or less the same number of packages. Probably might be a bit more, might be a bit less. I'm not exactly familiar with, with the good counting there. Uh, Fedora has probably a similar number of modules. Uh, Red Hat has, Red Hat, uh, has, I think, 43. So we have a much bigger problem there, and other distributions probably have similar small numbers, or even less, more of them. The only thing uh, that has, I see more is uh, FreeBSD, uh, if I count it here somewhere, probably. So there are a couple of solutions for this, of course, when, when a person doesn't find a module, can go and use the CPAN client, either with local lib or without local lib. There's a solution for that. Uh, you can go, and I'm not really familiar with uh, the Fedora world, where they usually go and find RPM uh, uh, 
So unofficial RPM repositories? I think, at least in, in, in Ubuntu, I haven't used that. So I don't know if there are such, uh, if there are many such uh, uh, places, but I never tried it. Or you can build your own private RPM or uh, Debian repository or just a single package for that module and then install that one. So these are various solutions. You can also mix these things. Um, you can mix the. You can try to install all the packages that it's possible from the package management system, and install the rest of the packages that are not there from CPAN. So you can have various, various solutions. But of course, we all know that besides the fact that the distributors, the Linux distributions, uh, recommend always using uh, the package management system, there are certainly uh, some advantages uh, for using them. So why are there uh, so few packages? And actually, probably at the beginning of my talk, I should have told you that it's not really a full talk. So I really would like to get people uh, ask questions or uh, tell their ideas. So anyone ideas, any more ideas besides these? Uh, just think about them. So I think that there, the reasons are the main reasons that I hear is that uh, users don't ask for more modules. I've he heard that both on the Debian list, Debian Google Packagers list, and on the Fedora, mainly from them, that users just don't ask for more packages. And um, I've heard a couple of times that uh, many modules are not worth it. <coughs> so you just um, don't package them. Okay. And obviously there are, so these are the that what I hear, I obviously know that it's time consuming to package uh, modules, uh, I mean there are 20,000, too, too many. It's also time consuming to keep them up to date, um, and because CPAN is uh, working fast, it's not always uh, um, important or, or, uh, or good to, to keep up to date the latest, because the latest is also the breakest, so we want to be more... Uh, Conservative, probably, in there. And obviously, lack of volunteers, which goes together with, with this. So, any other reasons you might think? Anyone? Yeah? Sometimes it's quite hard to actually convince uh, people that they should uh, somehow maintain your module um, as a package. You mean, as a SIP and author, yes. it's hard to get someone to package your. Yes. Yeah. I, I, it's, I think it goes back to this point, right? That yeah, uh, it, 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 at, at least in Debian, it's not about users not asking for more modules, despite what they're saying in the mailing list. There are quite a few open requests, but there, there aren't enough people who want to actually package them. Yeah, so uh, uh, that's this point, yeah. Which is, I mean, okay, that's uh, what we have. Okay, yeah. Any other ideas, reasons? I don't know how other administrators are working with Perl, but it's also very easy to use CPAN directly, so maybe people are not using packages just for that part of the system, and just use CPAN directly yeah. to get the dependencies solved and, and the latest version. And yeah, actually, because we have, because, I mean, it's like a, a chicken and egg problem, yeah. basically, because, because we, there's not enough uh, CPAN modules packaged by the various distributions, or certainly there are missing ones, so there is an alternative way, which is quite good, using CPAN PM or CPAN plus PM, installing those modules locally or some other solution. So we don't really need those modules packaged, so we ask them less, yeah. maybe. That's another reason. Um, yeah. So let's go over the, the, the items, at least what I have. Uh, so users don't ask for modules is, um, well, besides of those folks here who are more aware of open source and how this works and how that you can actually ask these things, most of the users actually are not socialized to do that. Most of the users I encounter, and I've been teaching Perl, and I'm doing consulting at companies, so I go a lot of times to companies, to people who are not aware really of open source. They only know about, oh, it's free, we can take it, and free as in beer. Uh, we can use it, and uh, we don't have to do anything, and, give, and not, we don't have to think and give back anything. And that's many users I encounter, and that's okay, but that we have to understand that they won't tell us that they need something, because they are not socialized to it. The corporate policy forbids it, maybe. I mean, they are not used to talking to the vendor, 
and Debian or Fedora or whoever is a vendor for that, for them. So they're not used to talk to them. Um, it might cost money, and they won't do it, and they're used to this. But maybe the most important thing that it won't have them, because they need the thing now, right? And they have some Fedora. Maybe it's even the latest Fedora. Usually it's not. Usually they are running on some uh, two, three, four years old version of, of the operating system. But even if it's the latest, if I ask now to, oh, please package this smaller, and uh, if, even if the Fedora people are packaging it in the next five minutes, it's still not helping me because it's not in the repository in the, in the one. So, so they won't ask. Many modules are not worth it. Yes, there are modules that are not worth distributing really in, in the extra work to, to package them. It's good that they are on CPAN for historical reasons or um, to frighten people or I don't know what. <laughs> but, but it's not worth the extra time. But there are actually a lot more than that worth it. So at least uh, definitely not, not more than 10%. I don't have a real number. Uh, but a lot, lot more than 10%. I know that personally I have, and I've, I have a limited use of Perl, but at least I have a couple of hundreds of modules that are not in Ubuntu that I'm using, either for myself or some at a client or, or something. So what can we do? Uh, in order to solve this, we, can, we need a better way to indicate it, that we need this module, because people won't tell it and, and so on. Uh, and we need to indicate the quality, which modules should be packaged. So if people don't tell it, we sort of the community, the, the Perl community, the CPAN community, should indicate the quality of the modules, the preference, which one is more important, which one is less important to package, so to we see. It's time consuming, consuming uh, to package. Well, <laughs> the solution is uh, both trying to further automate uh, the, build, the, the packaging, the repackaging process, um, which is just better integration of the of the CPAN tools and the, the, the nice CPAN tools tool change that you know about and the packaging tools. Um, catch is issues earlier. I'll, and I'll ask the those on the Fedora and I don't know about any other distributions having a Perl packager mailing list or CPAN packager mailing list. Only Fedora and Debian. If there are more, please let me know. I'll, I'll subscribe and spam you with my ideas. Okay. So, I mean, most mailing lists I've heard that the main major problem they encounter is licensing, that the licensing is not uh, to what they want, having it in every file or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but they have some standards, and not many CPAN modules, or most of the CPAN modules, might not, sta not be in that standard. Uh, so that's one of the issues. And the other one I just discussed uh, yesterday, and uh, this list of dependencies that um, and I have a, that Modules, uh, but it's, it's, it's an RPM problem, or it, the RPM people encountering it, that when they are trying to parse the Perl source code and extract what modules are needed, what are the dependencies, they don't find it uh, easily or correctly. And I'm not really sure the, the, the whole issue and uh, why actually they are parsing the source code of the Perl modules while the Perl packages are supplying the meta.yaml file, which is supposed to list uh, all the packages needed to run this module. And uh, actually, if, they, if, it, if it's missing something, then it's a bug in the module. So it's a bug to be reported. So I don't think that RPM or Debian or ever anything, any other packagers should rely on parsing the Perl source code. Should rely just on the meta.yaml file, and if it's missing or it's not but the information is not full, then it should just report uh, as a bug. And maybe they need to patch something there in order to, to package immediately, but report back to the, to the upstream, right? And I just encountered this because uh, I have a project which, called, which is called Padre. I'm going to give a lightning talk about this, which is an IDE. But the pro point is that it's running on both Windows and on, on, uh, on Linux. And uh, I just got, got a, I saw a bug report that uh, Padre is dependent on Win32 API on Fedora. <laughs> and uh, why, is it why is it in the dependency list? It's because the code has something like, if we are running on Windows, then load Win32 API and do something. And they were parsing that information, 
And they saw, and blindly basically, because they didn't see the if, the, the condition, they just saw that we are required in the winter return of API. Instead of looking at the meta YAML file, which, uh, which, has, which doesn't have in 32 API in it. Which actually leads to, to, to a problem we have just, just discussed uh, with, with Dave Cross, that, that the meta YAML actually should list that for <coughs> Windows, or clearly. But uh, that's a separate story that, that needs to be solved separately. But for, for now, the, the Linux distributions should rely on meta YAML, and if it's not correct, should report the bugs. A lack of volunteers? Well, to give talks. Uh, obviously, on FOSDEM, I'm trying to push this now. Uh, but there are the various pro conferences, the, the APSIS, both in Europe and in the US and in other places. I haven't mentioned the OSDC, which is in Australia usually and in other places also, at the Open Source Developer Conference, or the Perl workshops, or even on the Perl meetings. So if you are a Linux distributor and you are like, you have you need volunteers, one of the best ways is to go to these meetings and encourage more people uh, to teach, first of all, to teach them how, it, how it's done, that it's not that difficult and, that it's, and how it's done, and to encourage them to, to help you. Um, there's another issue, a separate issue, that there is a partial communication between the downstream and the upstream, meaning the Linux distributors or BSD or whatever, doesn't really matter, for, for in, this, in this case, and the upstream, meaning the CPAN authors. Now, I know that the CPAN authors are uh, a large number of people. It's sort of like, CPAN is one thing, but there are 20,000 packages from, I don't know, I think 7,000 authors. Um, and yes, we know that many CPAN authors or some CPAN authors disappear or don't respond, and yeah, that's a, that's a known problem also internally in the Perl community, of course, that uh, people uh, change their uh, priorities and uh, start doing other things and stop, stop responding, but that's okay. That's the nature of the, of the world. Uh, but probably we'll have to find some way to solve this issue within the CPAN Perl community uh, to, to answer to those questions. So, for example, instead of of trying to contact the author directly, who have, might have uh, disappeared, went on vacation for three months, or I don't know what. Um, there might be a, a central place to contact the CPAN, not like the CPAN maintainers, who are just uh, administrative people, but some people, a task force, who is looking, who is going to look after modules that are being distributed, or or are up to being distributed by the, the, the Linux distributions, but that have no continuous maintenance. So to get answer and to handle that part. Um, on the other hand, from the downstream, we don't we are we are missing some information, or partially again. Uh, I know one that is like uh, I think a year or two two ago, and I was talking with uh, some Debian. Uh, with Jeremiah and some other Debian people, uh, that some data that they are collecting some data. So at least from from Debian, I know that they are some, some, sometimes patching the modules. Uh, they are sometimes getting bug reports, and uh, this information not always reaches the upstream. Okay, uh, obviously it shouldn't go like uh, someone is manually updating them because that's so we should have a, a flow of data back to the upstream. Uh, also, the CPAN author doesn't want to go to each distribution and check whether Debian and Fedora and Mandriva and each one of them has a bug report for, for my module and, and why and have they patched it. So we should somehow be able to collect this information and represent for them either in the standard Perl uh, RTQ, that uh, the request tracker of CPAN, or some other way, but collect in a collect collected way. Um, and also, we, could, we might get all, all kind of other information. For example, we might have popularity uh, statistics. Uh, I think Debian has this popularity collection, uh, data collection. So I don't know if we could use that information again. Um, I don't know if it's made very useful for many people or, or if they are interested, but some of us are, definitely are. Uh, a little background of 
I saw, I think, oh, maybe two and a half people who are not Perl users here. Um, so cpan is basically a really small thing, right? cpan is just pose where we upload the modules and... Okay, another question. Who is a cpan author here? Just so, yeah, quite a lot of people here. Good. So it's not used for pose, it's where you upload the, um, the modules. CPAN is the actual site where you distribute is basically only an FTP server. It's uh, an FTP and a, and a collection of files, even hashed by the name of the author, so it's not really useful for searching or finding anything. It's just there for the distribution. Uh, and then the, the tons of mirrors, uh, both public and, and uh, private. And what it does, it just distributes uh, data in source uh, code in, in, in the source code format and it provides a fairly simple indexing of these these things. Basically that's what that's what CPAN is. But then we have the CPAN ecosystem, which is uh, what we know the the packaging the three main packaging tools, uh, module build and uh, module install and um, Exutils. MakeMaker, and the, the installation and the searching, search CPAN and Cope search, the main two search engines, but you all know about the cross-platform testing. These are all uh, separate from actual CPAN, even if many people think that they are sort of integrated. They are obviously not integrated well enough, but for some point of view, they, they are. So there are the testing reports that we recently uh, revived and, and they're really good and um, many other things, you know. So a couple of ideas. Any questions so far or ideas here? How to solve these problems for the packaging problem? Hmm? No? No one. Okay. Time, do you know? You've had 25 minutes. 25 minutes more? No, you've got... Um, that's the same. 20 minutes more. Okay. Okay. So a couple of a couple of ideas I had uh, collected basically from all kind of people. I'm just showing it um, that we can try to figure out uh, both at, from from both sides, from the distributors and the CPAN authors, to see how we can improve the the flow. How we can improve that we have a lot more packages being packaged by the distributor by, by the Linux distributions. Uh, so the distributions can supply uh, uh, some data, what we, they have collected. It, it would be really nice if we had easy way to get... Um, okay, I'll, I'll go one step back. Basically that I gave you this number that about 10% of the packages are there for in, in Ubuntu, but I don't really have the exact number. Uh, I don't know exactly which packages are there. Uh, and I have no clue about other, other distributions. I can run aptitude search on my box, which is it, but I don't know about er earlier versions, and I would like to have this information about various versions of the various distributions without installing them, without having to know anything. So uh, downloading them from, from a website, the information of which packages, which CPAN packages are packaged by them, which version of them, and then the list of bugs they have in their database, so I can report back to a central database. Uh, the list of downstream patches, so if anything, if, if a Perl module was patched, I would like to have it in a, in a way that it's easy to e extract and easy to report back to the CPAN author. So Debian has something we do to our previous uh, conversations, um, and recently there was this CPAN module created, the module package generator, which has a plugin for the Mandriva, because the guy who's uh, maintaining Mandriva, a lot of Perl modules in Mandriva, he wrote this. Uh, and it's in, I think it's generating a, a SQL file, a SQLite file from this information that, he, that uh, there is in uh, Mandriva. Uh, he created it a couple of weeks ago, so um, the next step I'm going to do is try to integrate it and report it somewhere. Uh, from the CPAN side, but uh, we need probably to see how other distributions can create the same uh, module for themselves and then create the reporting. 
That would be great. And then we'll see how we can go on from there, from this data. So when we, once we have all this data from the various distributions, we can display, we display them on the CPAN-related sites of the Perl community. There is CPANs. Who knows about CPANs? Okay, it's a less known uh, service because it's even less integrated into the search CPAN. Uh, the point is that it's, it actually it's not the right place to collect this, this information, but we, we did it there because that was uh, easier to do. So we have the, some, the data that Debian is supplying uh, displayed there. But again, both the data is partial, and this is not really the right place to do that. Uh, Coop Search, which is the second search engine, sort of, less known uh, of CPAN, uh, it includes a list of the PPM packages so for Windows. So for Windows, uh, many users, or most of the users, are still using Active Pro. And Active State is distributing uh, in probably a similar way as uh, uh, Debian or, or Fedora, they are distributing the, the CPAN packages compiled to Windows in, in the, uh, and they have a tool called PPM to install them. So in a way they are similar to, to the distributions, the Linux distributions. And they have, I think now, like 10,000 packages actually in their repository, but still are missing a lot other. So there are various websites, just, in, just like uh, in the RPM world, there are various websites Packaging those uh, modules for Windows into this uh, PPM format, and Cope Search is actually collecting this information. So, if you are a Windows user and uh, using Active Core and need a PPM version, which is a compiled version, so for uh, for all purposes, it's uh, thanks. Uh, so, for all purposes, is uh, it's quite similar to what Debian or, or Fedora does. Um, they, also, they, they, they have this information somehow collected, so you can go to this search engine and, and if you're looking for some uh, module that uh, for some reason ActiveState doesn't uh, distribute, you might be able to find another place that does distribute. So this is a good idea to take maybe even uh, for uh, um, Fedora, because the, the people might go to the other places, the RPM find uh, places, but it would be nice to, to display those, this information on one of the search engines. So where to find the RPM of this module? Or at this module, when I find this module, this is actually inc included into Fedora 12. And this one is in Fedora 12, but in repository something else, not the standard or whatever. OK? Uh, so this, this is there where some of the data is already displayed. Then the search CPAN, which is uh, currently, the primary place to search uh, for uh, for modules, it doesn't display any of this information. Maybe we should be able to. We should like. We would like to to display that. We have the actual issue there that it's uh, not open source. The, the code of it, uh, but um, hopefully we can get it there because that's the central place. But anyway, CPAN forum, which is a project I've been uh, main, non maintaining, um, I've just restarted working on it, and there I'm planning to include this information, which is less central right now, but hopefully by this information we can get uh, more interest also people to look at this, if we can have a central place to, to collect, collect this data. Uh, there was this idea about uh, a path through CPAN installation. So if I'm trying to install, for example, Smolder that I mentioned earlier, the Smolder itself is not packaged by Ubuntu, <coughs> but most of its dependencies are packaged. So if I can't pack install Smolder by aptitude, what I need is go to the CPAN shell and install from there. But then all of the dependencies will come from CPAN directly, not from Ubuntu, which would, would be my preference. So I would like to see sort of a, probably it's a, a, a plugin to CPAN shell, the CPAN PM, that if I type in install Smolder, it will, for every dependency, it will try to see if the operating system, the VM, for example, or Ubuntu, has this package already packaged and install that version. And only install from CPAN the things that, that are not distributed by the package management system. And in addition, maybe to report 
that okay, here is this list that I had to install from SIPA because they are not uh, distributed. And then this information can be supplied back to the maintainers of Ubuntu Debian as a certain uh, popularity of things that they don't have, that they would, uh, it would be important to package. So somehow, uh, I think, uh, that's the mis reporting the missing uh, ones. So obviously this should be, this, info, this could be done after we have the list of packages and we have a mapping between the CPAN name and the Debian name or Fedora name of the packages that can be do, uh, done. So from the same data that I, I told earlier that it, it would be nice to have from the distributions can be used also for this to install, uh, to have this path through installation. Uh, obviously, we can improve the CPAN packages as well. So we can improve the, the, the license checking either in CPAN. CPAN already has a, a way of checking if the module has license or if the metayable has the information of the license. The, the checking is not to the exact liking of Debian. So we're not checking exactly what they, checking, they are checking, I think. Uh, so we, we, we should do that. So we can already once the person uploads a CPAN module, we can already tell that, okay, this module doesn't stand in the, in the uh, expectations of Debian or Fedora, and this and this and this you could do, and then it will be obvious how to package it by Debian. And then we, we could eliminate basically that problem. Um, here is a question, yeah. What are the other issues that could be checked automatically that are disturbing the, the, the ease of distribution, ease of repackaging. That's an open question, actually. Anyone? Any ideas? Yeah? If you want to automate something to get Debian packages, you need to have uh, information in the method uh, on how the package is compiled and where libraries are stored so that you could automate that to get a mission compatible package and then automatically build it, which would be able to get into Debian also. Uh, I'm not sure I understood. You would say that when, when Debian is, uh, when Ubuntu is mirroring from Debian, right? Yeah. Then where Debian installed should be in the meta level? No, but how to uh, build a certain uh, kernel module, if you have that information into a uh, standardized format which could easily be parsed, you could quite easily package uh, about half of CPAN automatically. Oh, so. Wait, you so you are saying you are saying, saying, saying that if if you know how to where to install things, if in the CPAN author tell you where to install things, then it's easier to automate. Yeah. yeah no, I think it's it's a problem because CPAN is, uh, is these modules are supposed to be able to in, to be used on many platforms, not only on Unix. So, um, and it's in the end, it should be up to the distributions where to install things, right? Sorry. Yeah. Query uh, the CPAN module about uh, module metadata like uh, description and etc. etc. And uh, the quality of the metadata I can get from the CPAN module is very very different uh, for for different modules. And um, what I need for for making a BSD port is a one line description and something like something like a few sentences a longer description. And it's very difficult to get this. Um, the one line description usually is in the man page, but the, uh, the, the readmes are uh, mostly useless. Many readmes don't even tell what the module does. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is no, certainly there is no standard of. Okay, so the, the point is that, that the, some of the information that uh, Miro gets, right? Yeah. Uh, needs, uh, and maybe other uh, distributions, is in addition to a one liner of what the module does, some more uh, detailed description. <coughs> And probably some other information that is not in the meta YAML, and it's obviously hard to extract. Yes, we know that the readme files have no standard at all. Um, they used to eight minutes long. They used to have a purpose once uh, when search CPAN didn't exist, because then the CPAN client uh, people were using the CPAN client and could read, see the readme file and so on. Um, so many people don't see any too much purpose in the readme file anymore, because now search CPAN actually can show you the whole uh, content. 
But it's a good point, and uh, we should uh, think about, and we should discuss it uh, later on, what exact informations, what types of informations you might need, uh, so we can communicate it back to the, to the community deciding on the format of the MetaML file, and then push it, this information there. Yes. I, th I think from a metadata point of view, the previous person also was thinking about uh, there are multiple ways to build file modules, and that, that way is not indicated externally in the metadata, so it could be MacMaker, it could be module build. You don't know as long as you don't read the documentation coming with the file module. If it was externally available in the metadata tag, you could automate the creation of the package much more easily. Oh, so you're saying, saying that if I understand that you're saying that, you, that the, the package doesn't really indicate the, whether it's used, uh, whether the, 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 I mean, the, basically there are three main ma ways to package a module and which one which is one? being used. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's not, I think it's not indicated in the meta table, right, but it's, uh, what I think it should be obvious. If you have a built PL, then use that. If you don't have, then use make, make file PL. I think because built PL is all, only present if you have module PL. So I'm not sure if uh, this information is not. I mean, maybe we should extract this information and put it into the meta YAML file to make it parsable, and so people won't even need to look in other place. That's okay. But I think we already have a um, um, logic how to do that. It is Sorry? It is in the build dependencies, build required. Build required? Uh, build required will have module install or module build or XGTOS make MakeMaker in it. The, oh, the build required. Build okay, required. so the meta, uh, the meta YAML, okay. So what they are saying that the meta YAML is supposed to have a build requires entry, which should list either module build or XGTOS make maker in, in, in it. And that should be the indication. But the, it doesn't uh, prevent us from, from creating a, a separate field that's saying, okay, this is the, the builder, uh, which is, uh, I mean, extracting some of the information that you already have there and putting it in the meta file so it will be, it will be easier to parse and exactly the point that we were discussing, that RPM builders shouldn't parse the, the packages because, and find what are the dependencies because we, we have already done that. So it's actually similar. Yeah. yeah. More? Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, that's you. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so let's say that we solve all these problems, right? Yeah. So uh, from a CPAN package, uh, as a CPAN upper, I can upload a new package and it's uh, immediately packaged for Debian. It right? can be done, yeah. So, yeah, let's assume that we can do that already. Uh, but anyway, it will take time uh, for this package to. Uh, from unstable or something to come to the stable uh, yes. distribution because yes. as a user I'm using uh, Debian stable in production. Yeah, obviously, yeah. So, so yeah. you have a delay. That's just so. Thing. Right now, I mean, there's there's a problem there because right now to solve this we have to create, for example, in my case, we have to create uh, an internal uh, Debian repository mm -hmm. with our packages because we need them, like not right now, but say in one week or two weeks, yeah. that's the maximum acceptable time. Yeah. So I don't see how you can actually solve this problem because if you automate the full chain, so any uh, CPAN upload uh, goes immediately into Debian or whatever distribution, then you, you still have the sort of stability problem. So uh, I mean, because Debian people tell you that of course, if you automate everything, no one actually guarantees you that the packages work. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Okay, so so you say two two basically saying two two things. I think that one is that if you're if you're automating everything, and that every upload to CPAN goes in, immediately into Debian, uh, uh, then then there's no point of, of the whole thing because there's no quality control there. Exactly. There's no extra additional info uh, and value too much added value on the distribution. So I totally agree that uh, it shouldn't be fully automated and there should be an extra quality checking there. I mean, for me, it would be perfect, but... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, and that's the other issue, so, so, so it, it shouldn't be fully automated. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still expecting the added, if added value of the distributions of, um, yeah, of um, 
of further quality checking what, what we are doing. Uh, but, and I'm not <coughs> planning to get 200% there. I mean, if, if we are way higher than, than we are now, it's, it's already the hell. The other problem is that uh, you won't get it immediately in your actual used distribution in the Debian stable. Yeah. And yeah, this problem we can't solve this way. We can reduce the problem there. And most of the people are, who are using production code, they are supposed to use it uh, on, a, on a stable system. And that's OK. We don't, they don't have to use the greatest and latest software and break it. And building private RPM or dev repositories, uh, that's a separate story that I, I unfortunately, I, I didn't leave enough time for that now. Uh, but yeah, that, that should be also done. This automatic system that you can build automatically for your own purposes. Maybe not caring about license. I think Sorry. in my case, there's also, there's also really briefly uh, another problem, which is uh, I tried to, uh, to see if I could understand what to do to actually package something. I mean, say I want my modules packaged for Debian. So what can I do? But it, I, That's so exactly what I would mean, like the, the packagers some, tell us. Yeah, if there's some Debian developer here that can help me, because the entry barrier for me was a bit too... Uh, I mean, I don't know what to do. It's like tons of okay. things to do, so... Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay, so let me just finish in, uh, in, a, <laughs> in the rest of the one minute that I have. Um, so there's further issues that we can check. Um, then we, uh, there used to be, I think, or, or uh, even I just recommended a metric in CPANS that easily repackageable, which would che check whether if the licensee is there, whether if this, and all kind of things that we, ca we can already check in the CPANS tool chain or the CPAN eco ecosystem. So by the time the module gets to the di redistribution, these issues are already solved, mostly. So we need this information, what to check and how to check. Um, and then we can flag it either via, via CPANS or via some other uh, uh, way to and report back to the module authors. Um, and uh, somehow to recommend the packages to be included <coughs> so we can try to collect popularity and quality of packages in various ways. We have to think about how to do that. Uh, then there are a couple of ways how to uh, distribution can think about what to package. For example, others are already distributing. So if Fedora is distributing a package, it's likely that it's probably a good package to distribute by Debian as well, and vice versa. So when you're picking up out of the 20,000 which 10 more to package, then, and then you need a preference list, then this could be a, a way to prioritize things. Uh, then I would say that packages that have external, external dependencies, C and, and other things, or XML, these should be packaged by the distributions, the downstreams, because when they get, when we go out from the CPAN, then the CPAN client is actually less useful when you need some external dependencies. So those are more important to be packaged uh, there. Uh, or packages that are used by other many other CPAN modules, they are probably more important to be packaged. So just when they are thinking about what to package and what not. And a couple of references, Dave Cross is sitting here, and a couple of slides that he wrote, and Stefan Kassel, that uh, he has a presentation uh, up there that you can see about uh, related subjects. And uh, thank you. That's it. Any more questions? Do you have your slides on your website? Uh, I'll get it on my website, yeah. On, on my website, yeah. And if anyone wants to discuss this further, there is the parallel stand in the in the red brick building AW, right? It's called. Yep. So uh, you're welcome to come by, and then we can discuss it further or after the this talk. And you okay. have also Debian Pearl members uh, of uh, where you have members of Debian Pearl group here. Uh, me, uh, Gregor over there, and you can talk to us uh, with us also. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>